Hello, my name is Mike Eig, and in this video, we are going to look at GUI design elements in our series on Windows programming with C Sharp. Uh, before I get into anything here, I just want to mention that GUI stands for Graphical User Interface. So this is just sort of my way of showing you some of the stuff we can do to make our forms look a little bit better and be a little bit more user friendly. Now I will start with uh, just an empty form here. There's a few things I want to talk about, uh, namely some formatting tools, uh, docking, anchoring, tab indexing, and tool tips. Okay. Uh, and so what I want to do is I'm going to start with uh, a text box here, just sort of show you. Uh, let me find a text box control. Double click it, and we'll put it in here. Now text box control has the ability to be docked. Okay, and docking means that it will it will fill up a parent control. All right, so with my text box highlighted, I'm going to look for the dock property, and I see it's currently set to none. And when I click this list, I can see a couple different options. So I can look at the top here, the bottom, left, right, or the middle. So I'm going to click the top, and you will see now that the text box takes up the entire top of the form, and will continue to do so as the form is expanded. All right. Uh, I could also do uh, the left, or the right, or the bottom, or the middle. Now you'll see in the middle, it still only takes up the top. And the reason is it's a single line text box. All right, it can't grow vertically. I'll click the smart tag here and check multi-line. And now look what happens. It fills up the entire text box, or the entire form be multiple lines okay it's docked completely within that form taking up all available space all right so that's docking filling up uh, some distance depending on what your dock settings are at I'm gonna go back to none and so there we go well now it's all crazy in size all right and so now I want to talk about anchoring I'm gonna uncheck multi-line here for a second all right now anchoring is the ability to to fix uh, a, um, a controls position relative to the sizing of the form. So by default, my text box is anchored to the top left. What that means is when I run it, if I move my left, the control goes with it. If I move my right, it does not. If I move my top, it goes with it. And if I move my bottom, it does not. Okay. I can change how that's anchored. I can make it anchor to the bottom right. And so now when I run it, when I move the right, it goes with it, and the bottom, it goes with it. I can also anchor it to opposing directions, like if I do top and bottom, left and right. Now what we'll see is the left side of the control will be relative to the left side of the screen, and the right side of the control will be relative to the right side of the screen. So if I resize it, it grows the control. Now up and down won't do anything yet, again, because it's a single line. I make it multi-line just like this and then run it now you can see it will grow in all directions relative you could even go negative space I don't recommend doing that okay so that's anchoring we're anch anchoring it relative to sides of the form so if it'll expand or if it'll move one way or the other all right and we can use that for all sorts of things. We can also prevent the user from resizing our form to make it non-issue. But if the user can resize the form, it's often a good idea to, to move our objects so that the layout of the flow of the form still looks reasonable. Okay. Uh, next, I'm going to go ahead and add just a whole bunch of elements here. So I'm going to add a whole lot of buttons. Um, no, you know what? I'm going to do text boxes again. So I'm going to add a bunch of text boxes. Okay. So we have ourselves a bunch of text boxes here, and I'm going to put them in random, a random order. Okay. Uh, now you can see right now I have several tools available to me to help me line them up. So that's really neat. That's very useful. So now I can line them all up, and I can equally space them with these snapping. I can also highlight all of these and use the stuff at the top here. Uh, allowing me to make vertical spacing even, which it already is, allowing me to increase the vertical spacing, decrease the vertical spacing, or remove the vertical spacing. All right, uh, I can do stuff like that. Uh, let's say I had them horizontal like this. I could highlight them. I could make all the horizontal spacing even. 
I could increase the horizontal spacing, decrease the horizontal spacing, or removing the horizontal spacing in this case isn't going to do anything. Let me just bring these back in line just like that. All right, uh, and then let me make my vertical spacing even again, and we can use these to kind of help space everything up. Uh, and we have other tools where we can align the bottoms, which of course makes them collapse down upon themselves, which we don't want, so we're gonna increase the vertical spacing again. Uh, we can align the tops, which will do the same. We can align, if we do something like this, we can highlight all of them and then align the left side to kind of pop them all into place. Um, so we have these tools at the top to help our layout. All right, uh, we can make them all the same size if they're different sizes. Again, we're going to even up the spacing. So there's a lot we can do there just to help us line stuff up. Now I'll run it, and we'll see the first box to have focus is this one right here. So let's say I'm filling out a form, and I type, and then I'm going to hit tab. Well, I jump to the one above it, so I'll type, and then I'll hit tab. I jumped to the one above that, and now I jumped to this one, and I jumped all the way down here. And So if I'm trying to fill out a form, that's really annoying. Or I kind of want to start at the top and just go down. That's called our tab order. All right, As we hit tab, what order will these boxes jump around? And that's something we can set. So with my form selected, I'm going to come up to view, and I'm going to select tab order. And now we can see what the tab order of all of our different controls. Buttons will have tab orders. Uh, labels will too. Um, so you might want to fix it so they're not in part of the tab process. And text boxes and all our controls have a tab order. And that's the order when we hit tab uh, of which the forms get focused or which controls get focused. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click to set this one to zero. This one's one. I'll click twice to make that two. This one's three. I'll click to make that four, this one's five, and then I'll click to make that six. All right, and so now my tab order looks pretty good. I'll go back to view and uncheck tab order so my tab order goes away, and I'll run it. And now we see we're in this top box, and then I hit tab, and we're in the next box. Right, so it goes in order. So we've successfully set our tab order, um, which is very useful for making uh, non-irritating forms because it's super irritating when the tab order is incorrect on forms. All right. If we didn't want to do that graphically, uh, we can also see this tab index down here where I can just set the number. So I'd start here at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Anything that's 0 is going to have focus. Only one thing can have focus at a time, but anything that's zero, or the first item that's zero will have focus when the form opens up. Um, so just pay attention to that and, and set your tab indexes up uh, accordingly. Now I want to talk about tool tips. Tool tips are that thing that when you, when you mouse over and hold your mouse over a control or an element on a screen, a little box pops up and tells you a little bit more about that element. OK, um, we're not going to do tool tips with a text box because tool tips don't work correctly on text boxes. They work a little bit weird uh, because you're never really quite on a text box. It's just ready for you to type. So uh, we're going to go ahead and remove our text boxes. And we're going to add buttons. All right, and now there is no property for tooltips uh, currently to just type stuff in. What we need is a control to handle tooltips. So I'm going to come to my toolbox, and I'm going to look for the tooltip. And I will double click there, and you're going to notice the tooltip comes to the bottom of the screen. It's not a graphical element per se. It's not something that appears on the form. Anything that gets added to a form but doesn't actually take up screen real estate comes down here to the uh, this bottom area. So we see our tooltip one. Now when I click on the button and I come down to properties, we have a new property called tooltip on tooltip one. All right, and I can enter some tooltips here. Uh, so I can say this is button one. I'm actually going to just copy that. Uh, for button two, I'm going to say this is button two. For button three, I will say this is button three. And for my form, I will say this is a form. And now when I run it and I mouse over a button, I see this is button one, this is button two, this is button three. Nothing for button four because I didn't set a tooltip. And then I mouse over the form, this is a form. 
okay? Uh, so we've just added some tool tips. They pop up and give us a little bit of an idea of what is being asked for. So if we have something like name as a text box and then a button, you might highlight over the button says, uh, click here after typing your name or something like that. Some useful tool tip to just sort of help the user understand what's going on. Okay, so now that we have that working, I'm gonna go ahead and bring text boxes back into the equation and show you how they work just a little bit differently. So let me come to my toolbox here. I'm gonna grab a couple of text boxes. Uh, here we go. A couple of text boxes here. And we will give them a tool tip. Uh, we'll say, um, this one will be enter address here. And this will say, enter uh, name here. Okay. So we have tool tips for that. Now I'll go ahead and run it. And we'll see, you know, we got our button tool tips. And we get our text box tool tips, just like this. However, if a text box is, is focused, all right, we don't get a tool tip. All right. So if a user has, a, has clicked in there, um, they won't get a tool tip unless they come kind of, you can see it kind of flashing in and out. It's really hard to get it to stay. It kind of doesn't work exactly like you would expect. But if you click out of the text box and then kind of come back near the top, it appears. So it's a little bit harder with text boxes. It's not as consistent as it is with other controls um, to get those to appear. Um, so they're, they're generally easier to show on different elements like buttons and stuff than they are in text boxes because they're not super consistent on text boxes. I find that they, I mean, they do work, but it's just, it's harder to get them to pop up when they're focused or, or right after being focused and things like that. They can be a little bit more difficult. All right, uh, so that's gonna uh, finish talking about tool tips there. Uh, so in this video, we talked about the things that uh, from a non-programmer standpoint make our forms a little bit more pleasing to the eye, a little bit more uh, functional. Uh, we talked about docking, anchoring, uh, tab index, and tool tips. Uh, and in the next video, we're going to kind of put everything together, all our controls and our formatting and stuff like that, to build an application uh, to kind of get an idea of how these pieces fit together.